Honestly, it felt like a um, it felt like a regular game, like a tune-up game to me. I was telling everyone, like, man, this is my I don't know how many times I've played in Game Sevens, but uh, this is my tenth finals, and I probably played fifty plus uh, finals games in my career. So they just they feel like normal games to me now, and, and I was I was just really excited and and happy to play in this game like there was no nerves at all the coaches were looking at me kind of laughing because they knew that uh they knew the the look that i had in my eyes i i, I was just really confident you know, how do you explain that, that game, logo so. three though that logo three where did that come from <laughs> man I, I it was just a thing of like when i when i start feeling it I, I i have no clue where i'm at on the court like i think i think the one i missed was actually farther than that yeah. And, and, it, and it really felt good, but uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of got in the zone. You know how it is as a shooter. Yes, you just get in the zone and you, whatever you throw up just kind of goes in. You know, Chris, I actually want to ask what was the secret stuff you all had in that fourth quarter because even Junmar hit a three. Uh, step but back three. A step back three, mind you, which <laughs> I, have, I had no idea he had that in his bag. But of course, uh, you mentioned it a while ago. It felt like a regular game to you because you've been through so many finals. That's not necessarily true for a bunch of your teammates, though. How did you bring them along? Because I noticed you were leading a bunch of the huddles, the players only huddles, uh, right before the game at halftime. What would you say to those guys to bring them along? Yeah, I was just, I was just trying to be that calming, calming factor to those guys. I know some of those guys it was their first time playing in the finals, first time being in big games like that. So uh, it was just being that calming presence to those guys, and I, I know that those guys respect me and they will listen to me. So. It was just giving them, giving them the confidence that they needed to really perform in this game. Just letting them know that this is just a regular game, but we're going to need everybody to be at their best. And man, that third quarter was kind of shaky, but that fourth quarter was probably the best quarter we played all, all conference. Now, Chris, let's talk about what this title means to you personally. This is your ninth, but is this special compared to the others? Um, it. it it's my ninth. It's definitely special. Uh, it, it feels like what, it feels like it was my first one again since it's been so long since we won, mm -hmm. um, and so much in this world has happened since we won. Like yep. we last won in 2019, and everybody knows what happened in March 2020. We we were all locked up in the in our in our homes and on lockdown, and yeah. Jumar hurt his leg in Fe in February of 20. Uh, uh, we, I've, I've been through life. I, I lost my father, yeah. and my my father really taught me. Like he taught me everything about life. So um, it it was really emotional to to win this game, to win this championship. Because like I said, it just felt like the first one over and over. You know, Chris. Uh, of course, condolences first first and foremost. I know it's been a while since he passed, but then still our hearts go out to you. Uh, when you look at the what it meant to you. Uh, and what you went through through the past few, the, the difficult time uh, you mentioned in a few interviews that you even consider retirement I mean how do you go from that to winning another championship and playing like it's another regular game um when when my father passed it was it was really hard on me and I, it was one of those things where I I haven't I haven't experienced death that close to me uh, as far as anyone in my immediate family um, and for the head of the head of the household to, to go that quickly, and uh, it, it was really crushing for me. So it, it was a thing of me not really wanting to do anything. Like I, I, I just wanted to be at home with my mom and my family and spend time with them and make sure everything was good. And then um, once I once I got over that, I mean, it, it took a while. Yeah. Uh, once I got over that, I, I knew what my dad would want me to do. And honestly, before. Uh, when I came back, or after that, after that conference, uh, before this conference, I worked the hardest I've ever worked in my life. I uh, saw that. I really got into shape. Uh, I was I was setting up uh, runs with all the guys, like a lot of PBA guys. I know you. I know you came to a couple of days. Yes, sir. I went to a couple of runs that you guys had. Um, I was working hard, man. Me and my trainer Diego from my he's been my trainer for almost ten years. We we were getting in the in the weight room like three four times a week. I was going really hard and I really started the conference off well and then went down with that knee injury. Um, yeah. But um, I was able to kind of get healthy before the playoffs and then in the finals I started catching my stride. But um, I knew that's what my dad would want and I really worked hard to get my body in shape. 
hone my skills and, and, and get ready for this this push and try Chris, to win this championship. Chris, you worked so hard. Jago said that you finally shot better than him, but I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, but Chris, uh, obviously, with something that big happening in your life, and you were able to bounce back for it uh, from it and uh, really come out on top. How does that change your own perspective of the way you're going to work, from the way you're approaching basketball and, of course, the rest of your life from this point on, knowing that you can make it to the top again through the work that you just did? I mean, I, I, I've known this my whole life, and my dad really preached this to me uh, growing up, and he, he always told me that hard work beats everything. My dad, my dad had a job from when he was 12 years old all the way up until he, he just retired a year before he passed away and even before he before he retired he was working 12 15 hour shifts and after his shift he would go to the gym every single day and it it was that say it was that way for him for for 50 plus years and and I, and I learned that he taught that to me my brother and my sister and uh, so I know that I know what hard work can do and that's what I'm really uh, focusing on for the rest of my career, for the rest of my life. Just, even after basketball, if I put in the work with anything I want to do, that good things will come. And that's a, such an inspiring statement, Chris. But let's talk about your other family, the San Miguel Beermen. Um, you know, you gave some of the new guys their first taste of the championship, but some of the old guys with you also. What does this mean? And what can you say about the new era of the San Miguel team? Man, honestly, that death, our death five team was, we're, we were we were so good. But this new team was so deep and we're so good. Like we literally have two starting five, mm -hmm. and we just needed to work on chemistry and work on playing together because everyone that came over was used to being the man on their team and mm -hmm. getting this amount of shots and having to score this many amount of points. But once we figured out that uh, if we just work as a team mm -hmm. and pass the ball to each other the ball will find the right person and, and we'll win more games and that's when we really took off and now that we won this championship and these those guys got a feeling of of winning i feel like the sky's the limit for this this new bunch of group this new bunch that we have and i think we can reel off a few more